Hi, this is Pete Madsen for Acoustic Guitar, and I'm here to talk about my lesson on the playing of Elizabeth Cotton in open G and open D tunings. Um, Elizabeth Cotton would, had a major impact on the fingerstyle folk world of the late 1950s and early 60s. Um, her songs have been covered by Bob Dylan, Joan Baez, as well as many others. She was born in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and grew up in a musical family. Started off on banjo and eventually gravitated towards guitar. Uh, she was a left-handed player, and uh, unfortunately for us, we're not going to be able to learn to play the way Elizabeth did because she played her guitar upside down and backwards, which uh, gave her some interesting um, ways of playing the guitar. So we're gonna have to learn to do it this way with the guitar regular. Um, but you, there's plenty of video footage out on YouTube that you can check out of Elizabeth playing and uh, quite an accomplishment to be able to play guitar self-taught the way she did. Um, you're probably familiar with songs like Freight Train um, and Mama Your Papa Loves You. Um, those are songs that she did in standard tuning. Uh, she also had some quite well-known instrumental tunes in uh, the open tunings. And the first one we're going to start off with is called Spanish Flang Dang, sometimes called Spanish Fandango. Um, I believe the name of the song refers to the tuning, which is open G tuning. And that's what I got my guitar tuned to right now. So to get to open G tuning from standard, you want to take your sixth string and tune it down a whole step to D. So you're tuning down a whole step from E to D. Then you take your fifth string and you tune it down a whole step from A to G. Okay. Your fourth string remains a D. Your third string remains a G. Your second string remains a B. And then your first string gets tuned down a whole step to D. So now you've got yourself in open G tuning or what is sometimes referred to as Spanish tuning. Many early blues players gravitated towards uh, Spanish or open G tuning. Uh, it's it's kind of close to banjo tuning and this might be one reason why they tended to favor uh, G tuning. Uh, the song Spanish Flang Dang uh, is in waltz time, that is 3-4 time. So um, we're going to have to acquaint ourselves with like three beats per measure, and we'll do that in just a second. But first off, I want to just get some of the uh, chord voicings down that we're going to use. A G chord would typically be played with the first finger fretting the um, first string at the fifth fret, and this is example one. I'm strumming through five strings, and that's my G chord. My C chord, I will bar five strings, and that becomes my C chord. A couple of different options for D and D7. The one on uh, in the example is I'm fretting the second string and third string, and then playing the first string and the fourth string open. And of course, you can add the sixth string in there. Okay. So we have G, C, and D7. And these are the three chords we will be using in Spanish Flandang. Um, exercise two, we're going to do a, a simple finger picking pattern uh, that revolves around this 3-4 waltz time. Uh, let me play it once for you. One, two, three. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm starting off with a pinch. I'm playing the fifth and first string. And I'm using my ring finger on the first string. And then I play the second string with my middle finger. And then the third string with my index finger. Okay, so that's example two. Example three, I'm going to do uh, a, a, a D7 chord. So here I'm pinching the fourth and first string. 
and play the second string and third string. Okay, in Spanish Flandang, most of the melodic movement happens on the first string underneath that G chord. So example four is going to give you a little flavor of how that goes. One, two, three. Play a little faster. I'm going to put a little more emphasis on the first beat of each measure just to give a little more um, gravity to the, um, to the melody. Okay. Uh, sometimes Elizabeth Cotton would use these nice little flourishes or rolls that in her playing. So for instance in example 5A she would um, or do a roll here with her fingers and what I'm doing is using my thumb to play the fifth string and then as my fingers go through the third second and first string they roll outwards and at the same time the left hand I'm going to slide up do that again In example 5B, another way she would play that phrase would be instead of the slide up, she would hammer on. Okay. Example 6 um, shows you a way she would navigate between the 4 chord, which is C, uh, and back to the 1 chord, and then back to D. I'll play that for you. One, two. Okay, um, examples in example six over that C chord, I'm playing that first string first and then. The thumb drifts through the, the fifth, fourth, third, and second string. And then I use my fingers to come back. And then we go to our D chord and we're going to do that thumb dragging through those third strings. Let me play example six again. One, two, three. Okay, uh, example seven shows you how to go from the five chord back to the one chord. Sounds like this. Play that again. So that's some examples of Elizabeth Cotton's playing in open G tuning. Now I'm going to move to open D tuning uh, to play examples from a song called Vastapol, which is a fairly well-known tune. And also, uh, actually what the tuning is, is often called, it's called Vastapol tuning. Um, to get to open D from open G, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that 6th, 4th, and 1st string alone. Those are all Ds. The 5th string, I'm going to tune back up to 8, and I'm going to use my handy-dandy tuner. So I went from G back up to A. Uh, and then the third string I'm going to tune down from G to F sharp. The second string I'm going to tune down from B to A. Now when I start changing my strings around a bit, other strings will compensate, so I need to go through all the strings again, make sure everybody's in tune. Okay, 
Okay, so now I'm in open D tuning, and we're going to work on some ideas from the song Vestipole. Um, this is a great song. If you hadn't heard it already, I highly recommend you listening to it. Again, you could go to YouTube and find some of her or, uh, performances, um, live performances. Um, I'm going to start off uh, example eight, where I'm going to go from a G chord, looks like this. <laughs> to a D chord. Let me play the example and I'll break it down. So um, this is built on an alternating bass pattern, um, the bass for my G chord. It's going back and forth between the fifth and fourth string and then when I move to my D chord, to the sixth and fourth string. Let me count into that and play it again. One, two, three, four. Uh, so on the D chord, I notice I have a little hammer on there. And that will be one thing that might be a little tricky for you if you haven't played this style before is a hammer on it that falls at the same time there's a bass note going on. One thing I like to do is isolate those little parts of uh, the, where the hammer ons are occurring. So if I took where I went to D chord and just took the second half of the measure. Work that out and then work backwards. And that's how I work those ideas out. Oftentimes what people end up doing when they have a hammer on like that, they'll play something like this. Where they separate the hammer on from the bass note. Um, the hammer on is going to fall at the same time as the bass note. So just remember that as you're playing that. It, the, the hammer on might get swallowed up a little bit by the bass note, but uh, if, if you're playing it right, you should still be able to hear it. Example 9, uh, I'll be moving from that G chord back to the D chord again, but doing a little slide on the D. Here you go, I'll show it to you. One, two, three, four. So we started off on that same G chord. And then as I'm, I'm going to make this move to the D chord, I'm still on G, I lay a finger down, slide up, and so I'm back into D right there. So it's a nice, really nice transition going from the G to the D. I'll play it again slowly. One, two, three, four. In example 10, we have a similar move that happens from the 5 chord, A, back to the 1 chord. So this is example 10. So this is our A chord. It's basically just two fingers laid down on the 3rd string 1st fret and a middle finger on the 4th string 2nd fret. Still alternating my bass between the 5th and 4th string. And then here comes the transition. So I get into that slide again. Same slide I did uh, when I was coming from the G chord in example 9. Here's another move that, uh, that um, Libba, she's known that Elizabeth Cotton was sometimes known as Libba, 
Here's a move she would do in the verses, the opening verses. Uh, involves a slide underneath the D chord. Sounds like this. This is example 11. So we got this slide going from the 2nd to the 4th fret. And just repeats that and it's just got this great groove going on. Another uh, phrase she would play in that same uh, part of the verse would be up the neck a little bit. And this is example 12. Very common phrase in blues, whether you're in open tuning or in a standard tuning, is this little the kind of train wine sound that you get there at the eighth and seventh fret. Songs like Poor Boys, Long Way From Home also use that phrase. I'm sure you can find dozens of other examples that use a similar uh, phrasing there. We're using this in an open tuning, obviously, um, with the alternating bass going from the sixth and fourth string. Uh, so next up, I want to take some of the ideas from Vestapol and put it into something I call liberation. Um, based on the, uh, the style and playing of Elizabeth Cotton, and um, take some of those phrases and maybe embellish them a little bit and add my own stamp to it. This is example 13, liberation. One, two, three, four. So I started off Liberation with the lick uh, from Vestapol. But then I added a little phrase that came up to the 10th fret. Okay. Then I walked into a G chord. Add a little note up there. Um, play that um, F note. A nice little blues sound. Then we're back to G. Use that same um, F note, but we play it again. This is um, measure 10. So we're pulling off there. walk down to A, walking down again, okay, so that's liberation based on the playing as of Elizabeth Cotton in her song Vestapol. Uh, I invite you to play around with these ideas um, in open G and open D tunings. They're a lot of fun. You play an alternating bass, you borrow some of these ideas that you get from a player like Elizabeth Cotton, and you come up with your own ideas that sound hopefully good.
Thanks. I'm Pete Madsen for Acoustic Guitar Magazine. Hope you enjoyed this lesson on Elizabeth Cotton.